Hey what's happening gang, welcome to your second OAuth tutorial and in this video I'm going to give you a deeper look into the OAuth flow. Alright, so in the last video we had a quick look at how this whole OAuth process is working and this was a really simplified look, but it went something like this. A user lands on our awesome website and they want to sign in with some kind of social provider like Google or Facebook. So for example, they want to sign in with Google, they click on this big red sign in with Google Plus button. We then redirect them to the Google servers where they're going to find this consent screen right here. And right now, this consent screen is saying to the user, look, the website that you just came from, they want to access your profile information with Google. Do you want to allow them to access this information so they can use it on their website and sign you in? If they click allow, then we're going to redirect them back to our website where we now have access to their Google profile information. So we can take that information now and we can store it in our own database to make our own record for that user. And the reason we might wanna do that is so that we can expand on the data we have on that user. For example, on our website, each user might have a points associated with that user. So we can add them to our database. It's nothing to do with uh, Google, just our user, all right? So we're grabbing that information and we're storing it in our own database so that that user can then log in and use our website. So this is a really simplified version of what's going on. I wanna dive in a little bit deeper now to take a look at what's going on behind the scenes a little. So same again, first of all, a user is gonna start off in the browser and it's gonna sign in with Google, for example. Now, before we redirect them straight away to the Google consent screen, what we're gonna do is redirect them to another page or another route on our application, right? And we can call this route whatever we want. I've called it forward slash auth forward slash provider. And provider is just a placeholder for whatever service they want to sign in with. For example, Facebook or Google. So in this case, it's going to be forward slash auth forward slash Google. And we're going to handle that route on our application. So this big block right here, this represents our node application. And we're going to handle this route forward slash auth forward slash Google when they click on this button. And we're going to say to ourselves at this point, OK, so this user wants to log in with their Google profile. Therefore, I'm going to redirect you to the permission screen for Google, which, remember, looks something like this. So they're there now and they're going to grant us permission to use their profile. As soon as they do that, we redirect them to a custom route. And again, we can make up this route. We decide what it's called. I've called it auth forward slash provider. Again, this will be Google in this case forward slash CB for callback, because this is a callback route. So they're redirected to this route, and we now have access to their profile information. Now, at this point, what we want to do is work out whether this user has been to us before or not. If they have been to us before, we might have some details about that user in our own database, right? If they've not been to us before, we won't have you, uh, details about that user in our own database. So we're getting information from their Google profile and what we're going to do is look up that information in our own database. If we find a user that matches that information, we're going to retrieve that user from our database and any extra information we might be holding on them. If that user does not exist in our database, we're going to create a new record for them in it. All right. But either way, at this step right here, what we're going to do is we're going to have our own version of that user record. Right. So once we have that record, we need a way to tell the browser, look, we know who this person is. They're logged into our application and any subsequent they, uh, request that they make, for example, to their profile page, which requires them to be authenticated. We want to show them their profile. We want to authenticate them simply without going through this whole process again. So the way we're going to do this is by at this point, when we have our user, our own version of the user, we're going to create a unique cookie and we're going to send that cookie to the browser. And this browser is going to store that cookie so that any other request it makes for example, to see the profile page, then it's going to send this cookie back with the request. We can retrieve this cookie and decode it and say, hey, I know who this is. This is X user or Y user. So I'm going to show you your profile page. You're authenticated, right? So we're going to create these cookies to create a session so that a user can easily authenticate on different pages of our application. For example, their profile page, right? So this is kind of the whole process. And again, this is slightly simplified, but it goes into the whole process a little more deeper, if you like. But at certain points, especially over here and down here, there are going to be extra things we need to do. 
and we're going to go into those when the time is right. Now, I said we're going to be using Passport to kind of help us with this whole authentication flow. And we don't just say, hey, we want to use Passport in this Node application, take care of everything for us. Doesn't work like that at all, unfortunately. But what we are going to do is use it at various different points in this whole process. So I've highlighted these different stages in yellow right here. So at first, when we're interacting with Google, we're going to use it. Then when we retrieve information back from Google, we're also going to use Passport. It's going to help us do that. Then when we're serializing and deserializing users later on, when we're using these different cookies, we're going to use Passport again there. So these are the different stages we're going to use it in. Now, some people don't like Passport because they don't feel they know where to use it and the whole flow is a bit mishmash. So that's the reason I've created this diagram right here and showing you where we're using Passport um, so that everything's kind of logical in your head when we come to code it. And I think on some different tutorials, they jump right into the code and they start using Passport. But then you're like, well, I don't really know what you're doing here at the different stages. They're all kind of mixing together. So we're going to be referring back to this diagram time and time again to show you at what stage we're up to and where we're using Passport along the whole OAuth flow. OK. So I don't expect you to remember this whole thing now, but I would expect now that you do have some kind of basic understanding of how we're going to structure this and how we're going to work it. Right. And the whole process, if you like. But like I said, we will be coming back to it. So don't worry if you don't fully understand it just yet. But anyway, now we've got this out of the way. In the next video, I want to dive right in and start to create our Express application in Node.js.